Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Amplified Totemless Hardcore Minecraft World with me, your host, Larktobird. Right now I'm currently AFKing at my mob farm. It's just one of the flushing mob farms. And I am using that to collect a little bit more gunpowder. I'd like to fill up a third shulker box of gunpowder just because today I am preparing for boomies ahead of a live stream. This is, you'll hear about this in the in the past, or in the future technically, if I remember my time zones, because I decided that I do not want to build a gold farm on the nether roof. I don't want to use the nether roof at all for farm building. I might, might use it to travel to distant lands and stuff in search of new biomes and such in future updates. And so I want to stay relatively compact in the, in the world. So I am going to have to clear an entire perimeter in the nether now in order to build a gold farm because gold because zombified piglins equals gold nuggets gold nuggets equals gold ingots and gold ingots trade with pigmen or piglins to get all sorts of resources like quartz blackstone just a lot of renewable resources that would be very helpful in this world so that i can continue to keep building and so this is something that i need and would really really help me out Okay, so I think I found the perfect location for our gold farm. Just kind of flying around the nether, looking, and I came across this giant area that's kind of empty. And so one of the biggest challenges with war leaders and stuff in the nether is you have to eat through a lot of material, and then you have to deal with the lava. But this is essentially just one giant lava lake, and... Yeah, so if I push this button right here, you can see this is a structure generated by Mini HUD, uh, and we can see that this is this is a 288 by 288. So essentially, like there's a single chunk in the middle, and then that I can just stay within, and I can not worry about mob spawning anywhere else. It's kind of just kind of like a whole chunk buffer on all four sides, so 16 blocks on that side, that side, that side, that side, and. So then we do have a different, a few different biomes. So we do have a crimson forest in here. We do have a warp forest in here and we do have a, just the edge of another fortress here, but none of those should be a problem because the farm is going to be built in the very center of it. And so like this, this crimson forest, which is the closest to the center actually ends about a chunk of or two away outside the, where the farm should be located. And so I think this will be a perfect location. It's a little far too. It's a, a, a thousand blocks. Uh, northeast of spawn, so actually like 1500 blocks by using the Pythagorean Theorem, but we won't talk about that. that no math, this is a no math place, no math place. <laughs> so yeah, so the first step is to get up to the roof, find the lo location in the corner. That corner looks pretty, pretty nice. And then we need to build a world eater to eat, actually a tunnel borer to destroy the area on a single side. And then we can build another thing to destroy the rest of it. So, let's see what we can do. Okay, so right now we are at a point where I have both of the side trenches on this side and also the far side mined out or explodificated. You probably saw that time lapse just a few seconds ago. And I was I built this the small um, tunnel borer to essentially clear out the top layer because I need to clear I need to essentially floss the bedrock and clear out all this that connects both trenches up before I build any more machines to go down. But I'm running into a problem where I'm being overrun by mobs. So they're not only are they on the machine itself, but they're also um, coming up attacking me. And you probably hear the gas right now, but the gas responding and making it difficult. So that means I have to keep running while I do this too. That means that not only do I need to find a solution, which I already know the solution, 
and that is a mob switch. And because I like to do terrifying things, I'm gonna make a mob switch with wardens. Woohoo! Throw the confetti. Let's go. Okay, maybe maybe it's not that exciting, but I have built a warden mob switch once before, and oh, I, I better just start flying. And it wasn't too complicated, but it's just. The first spawn of a warden is terrifying because you just never know. You just never know when if it's going to spawn in the right location or if it's going to come murder you. So let us go and find a. Oh my goodness, this is terrifying. Let's find a location to build the mob switch so that we can keep making progress on our gold farm. So it's always terrifying when you come into an ancient city. And there's just a warden there, but I discovered that we actually had a tunnel all the way to the surface, which is uh, like at like 150 all the way down to the ancient city. So that's pretty fun. But yeah, I forgot that I needed a, a skeleton skull and I left a friend behind. So I guess I'll just have to wait for him to cool down and then I got to figure out which a uh, shrieker I want. I want a shrieker that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I'll have to fly around and see what is up. So let's have some fun, I guess. So I was a little worried that the nether portion of the switch would be in a very, in a very inconvenient location, but it just so happens that it is in the middle of this lava lake. And you know, I'm fine with that because wardens can't get loose in the middle of a lava lake. I don't. Th I think they're fire resistance, but. By the time they get anywhere close to causing damage, they will have despawned anyways, probably, or called back into the earth. I don't, I, I don't know what, what technically they do. So I just pill, pillared up from the bottom of this lava lake, and so let's get the nether portion finished. Okay, so it is finally time to see. If this works, I got the mob or the I got the nether portion built. I also built the chunk loader, which is located in both the overworld and the nether. And so all I gotta do is place these blocks here and then stand on the shrieker. There's I don't think that's one. Oh, this is so terrifying. There's two. There's three. Oh my goodness. This is going to make me so nervous right now. And there's four. Did it work? Oh my goodness, this is so nerve-wracking. I had to get jump in the free cam to see where they're at. They sniff. And then they should they wander towards me. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's two. So now I gotta count to 70. Can we get 70 here? Oh. Okay, so after quite a bit of nervous energy and stuff, we got 70-ish wardens entrapped in the nether. And they're still quite loud, even from my portal when I come out there. It's gonna scare me every single time I go through that portal, probably. But I guess we can finally now get back to building, so... Yay! Or not building, we can get back to exploding. Yay! Okay, so I have finished at least one pass, and so then I took a little break to kind of make some measurements and stuff, and I have identified a small problem, and that is I need to be farther down, like, five blocks. And so I'm gonna have to take a, a hot second to figure out what I want to do if I want to rerun this over and what I'm gonna do with the rest of this, because I'm only about a third of the way done with clearing this top layer out, and so I wonder if there's a machine that I can build over here 
and just go all the way that way. I know there are some special ones as well. It'll take a lot longer, but I can just essentially AFK it then. So let me think about it and come right back to you. So we are currently mining in the nether. And of course, there would be lava spawning right in there. I have a few hits at least. And so I decided to do a different farm than what I'm used to, or a different miner, and it's going to be a three-directional miner. And so essentially, like, it will bounce left to right, and then every time it gets to one side or the other side, it will move ahead a singular block, and then I'll do it again. It also crushes lava sources, so I don't have to worry about crushing lava or putting myself in danger. It will get hung up a few times on ancient debris, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. I'm, I'd rather have the quarry or the, not, the miner stop me have to mine some debris and then restart it then for me have to do this stuff the, for the entire area because I can just AFK on the roof because we punched a hole here in the very center of our area and also back at spawn with it on a twitch stream so I don't have to worry about wasting a bunch of rockets navigating over lava lakes and stuff when I already this is already dangerous enough as it is so so I'm gonna finish this mining this is the last I have to do I will build the trench maker behind us or not the trench maker the farm and i will get back to you on that so when we started it for the first time okay it's officially time and this is a moment i'm very excited for so we have the machine all the way down there right above my head and we have the other half right here all i have to do is break this one redstone block above my head and to get started, I was able to successfully get this last trench cleared out, which was a pain in the butt. There's so much lava, and every like three blocks I'd have to stop, get out, block up lava, redo it. But this is a little nerve wracking, and I really hope it works. And if it does work, I'm just gonna go stand on the roof to safely AFK, and hopefully this entire area will be done when we're when we wake up, essentially. But let us get started by put breaking this block. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's working. Well, I guess we'll see if it works or not. So I will see you on the other side. Well, after probably way too long of letting that single machine slowly mine away at this area, as well as only have to re rebuild it once because I was a little stupid, but it was fine. I only lost a few materials, had to fly back, come back and rebuild it, but we got it all mined out all the way from one side to the other. I could definitely take it a little further, but I was just like, nah, we have enough space here. We got our area we cleared out we want to, so now it is time to build up the machine. But we have to do a little bit of TNT blasting still. Got to make our trenches on all four sides. Make sure the lava lake is clear out because it's going to remove the lava lake as well, which will be very exciting. And so that's the plan, kind of. So we, I have a lot of materials I got to gather, though. So one step at a time. I have one thing to say, and that is... There's a lot of resources, and I got to do a lot of grinding for that, which is what we've been doing. I actually afk overnight for slime blocks, and I didn't get enough still, so I had to AFK some more. Now we're getting redstone from our clerics to get redstone blocks and redstone dust to make redstone components. Then I got to go mining in the nether to grab, make, to get stuff to make observers. And then I got to make components to <laughs> make pistons. So we have a lot of grinding to do, a lot of grinding. And I have to go mining for cobblestone in the end, so there'll probably be a few more farms built between now and when you see me next time. 
but I will talk about them in a few seconds. So, peace. So you're probably wondering how I got stuck in this position. Well, to, to be honest, I, I know how I got here, but sometimes, you know, it's fine. Anyway, we're, we are currently bringing up some bees in the end, so I need honey blocks in order to get our quarry going. And in order to make that happen, I need needed a faster farm because my little 10 hive set up, or I don't even think it was 10 hives, wasn't working. And so, not only though am I breeding up bees, because I kind of have to keep the area loaded, is I'm also duping some concrete. I'm actually just going to hide right here once I get out out here and pre him over there but so i built the the storage a rainbow of course because why would we not do a rainbow for storage and the way this works is that all the drops and stuff which is it's currently running right now which we'll look at it in a second all the drops fall down into this water stream up here and then on the right side looking towards Xanderman farm we have all of our powder and on the left side we have all of our solid blocks and if i turn on hold on If I turn on Light Matica and I push this button, you can see that right here. You can see that we're slowly getting some accumulated. It's not the fastest because right now I'm only duping a single block of each color and converting it. And so I actually had to convert a bunch of sand because you would not imagine how much glass I need to make bottles to stock this up. It's like 25 shulker boxes to, to fill up all the dispensers and all of the hoppers. And right now I'm just trying to fill the dispensers up because it's still a lot of honey bottles I can gather. But the way the farm works is, as you can see, it's duping in here. And because I'm in, in solid mode, I'm only duping concrete powder. So the concrete powder is bounced around down here and it's accumulated. I gotta remember which where it accumulates at. Uh, so it's right here. So like on the, these two corners are put together in one single block and then they're bounced down and over into this water stream. And you can see that it when they hit the water, it solidifies, and so then the next block moves upward, and then so on and so forth as it solidifies, and then once it gets to the top, it's on a clock, and so it pushes it over, and then everything gets pushed, stair-stepped up, and then explodificated. So the same thing happens on this side, is that these two corners accumulate, and then they bounce around it as well. So, and yes, it is not 100% successful because just TNT and then random movement of items and so and the last thing that we have here this is a batcher i always forget what this is called but it's a batcher and so all these blocks hit this and they kind of get stuck for a second and so that allows them to form a single stack because if you if you just had a randomness going through there a lot of times they would be missed by the hoppers because hoppers have a cooldown and so this is just an effective way to get them to be the most efficient at picking up items so they're not overwhelmed with block after block after block. So I'm going to be resume being stuck in here with the bees and I'll probably be here for like a, a few hours just bringing up bees. So I would love to fill this entire chamber up with bees so that I don't have to worry about um, ever. I could just AFK here real quick and then get a ton of honey. So plus I need like 150 bees plus a stockpile out of bees so once once a bee already always comes out of the nest there's always a bee that can go inside the nest so we're constantly cycling through bees but also i guess i probably never talked about why this is in the end so in the end and in the nether there is no daylight cycle and so the bees are always working while in the overworld the bees are limited to how many oh my goodness this is insane they're limited to daylight hours when they can work and so it just i end up with like 10 minutes out of the day cycle where they don't work and i don't like that that's very inefficient and i would like to make sure that i am afking and using my time worthwhile because we're already at 840 days at this point and i was hoping to actually have it done but the quarry or the world leader done by eight day 850 well actually day 750 a while ago but it's just not feasible it's just not feasible so i'm gonna keep on the grind and i'll check back with you when i'm ready to build Okay, so it is finally time. I can't tell you how long it took me to get to building this giant world leader. 
by far the largest thing I've ever made, apart from a quarry that I made. And especially in the nether, this is the largest thing I've ever made. And so all I gotta do is go to this corner over here, remove that redstone block right above my head over there. And then I get to hopefully see that it doesn't melt my computer because last time I ran one of these, it, my computer literally melted and I couldn't run it. So I'm hoping that since then, my computer is a little bit bulkier, a little, a little speedier. So we'll see. So let's go over there and let's try it. Oh, this is nerve-wracking. Very nerve-wracking. Um, so let's do this. And... Oh. This is a magnificent way to mine the nether way. Like, there's been some points where there's a lot of lava and I'm just worried, but then you get these little pockets of ancient debris a pop up and the machine just flies right over them, pushes them down, clears the lava, and then just deletes the blocks underneath of it. And honestly, pretty great. And you can stop it on either side. I just, I didn't realize that until I was watching you. So you can stop it over there. Or that redstone block right above my head as well. <laughs> so, it, it stopped for a second because I definitely don't want to run this right now at 11 p.m. at night. Because I just, I just want to sit here and watch it. So, so I will, and I also need to clear out some of the sand as well. So, I still have to, as you can see, the lava falling. I still got to open the trenches up. So, that'll be something that I will do first thing in the morning. But you'll probably see a giant time lapse of the entire world being destroyed after this. So... Enjoy! Welcome back after that almost complete time lapse. So I love replay mod, but I also hate replay mod because it decided to corrupt my replay footage from about four hours of clearing this. As you can see, if you look below me, it is cl completely clear. Actually, probably better if I just flew around a little bit. Some lava pockets and stuff, but the replay mod file got corrupted and so I had to recover it and it, that was like a two or three day ordeal of trying to figure it out and then I got was in the middle of being sick and everything like that so this has been it's about five or six days after I finished this up and so the next steps essentially are to break or destroy the rest of the or destroy the machine to clear out all of the ancient debris to fit clean up the lava pockets and then start building the farm and I've been doing some gold farm testing and stuff like that, doing some creative farm testing, and because I don't want to, I don't feel like, I don't want to use just the standard gold farm. I want to have my own design, 
And at the current moment, I am pushing rates to potentially become the fastest gold farm. And that's exciting, but I don't know how it's all going to work out. It could be in this episode, it could be in the next episode, or I could have a dedicated video to it. So we'll have to see about that. But you'll probably now see a time lapse of me clearing this farm. And then I'll either see you afterwards or I'll see you in the next one. So let's let's check it out and see what's going on. So this massive project is finally completed, but this is only the first of three stages involved. The first being to clear the perimeter, which you can see has been cleared and lost. The second is to build a super fast and custom gold farm. And the third is to decorate it and make it beautiful. But what makes this even more amazing is that I've done this without totems in an amplified hardcore world. And so far, we've had some pretty close t chances with death, as my Twitch chat can definitely tell you. But we've nearly made it to 1,000 days here. And speaking of 1,000 days, we're having a party! Woo! A 10-hour celebration to mark the milestone of 1,000 days in my totemless, amplified, hardcore Minecraft world. That's a mouthful. It's been an adventure, and I wanted to celebrate crossing into quadruple digits with you all, with some of you, which some of you have witnessed from day one. The celebration is going to be on January 13th, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern United States time. It's a bring your own food, drinks, and cake celebration, but entertainment will be provided by yours truly, Mumbo Jump. Oh wait, no, I mean by me, Lark to Bird. So don't miss out on the celebration. Join my Discord to keep up to date on the events. Post what cake you're bringing, and I'll see you there or in the next episode. Goodbye!